Hello and welcome to IFM. Today I want you to show the data splitter. With this machine I want you to show a short use case on how to use the data splitter. This machine is used to prove the water resistance of different devices. Over here you can see the test objects and on the side you can see nozzles. These nozzles spray water with high pressure from different angles onto the test object. This machine is controlled by a PLC. The sensor over here measures the water pressure of every water nozzle. The PLC is just using the analog and zero outputs of the sensor. But this sensor is actually an Iolic sensor and with this data splitter we can use the Iolic signal to monitor the process. We want to monitor the process to guarantee an equal quality of each test run. To use this data splitter, we have this special cable over here. This end will be connected to the sensor and this end will be connected to the PLC. And this end over here needs to be connected to the data splitter. And this end over here will be connected to the IO-Link master. As first step, remove the sensor cable. Now. I use this end and will connect it to the sensor. And this cable will be connected to the PLC cable. For a quick sum up, the orange cable was directly connected to the sensor. Right now, the data splitter is connected in between the PLC cable and the sensor, but the machine is still working exactly the same way. So if the machine is still working the same way, why and what exactly have we done? The IOLink data splitter is communicating with the sensor automatically via our link. Therefore we did not have to configure the sensor. This will work with every IOLink sensor automatically. The IOLink data splitter is now extracting the CO signal out of the IOLink stream and the analog signal will just be passed through this device. So that way the machine can still work the same way as it done before without configuring anything else. Why did we do it? We do it to monitor the process. With the IOLink port of the data splitter we communicate with the sensor. And now we are able to use all the IO-Link features. Let's connect the data splitter to an IO-Link master. You could use the USB master to monitor the process right next to the machine. But we are going to use the AL master, which is connected to our network. Now with all devices connected and the machine still working the same way, we can go to the office and monitor the process. Now from the office we can monitor the process. Let's have a look to LR device. Here you can see the live data of the pressure sensor. And on the right corner you see an overlay image of the machine. Like you can see the first nozzle has a process value of 100 bar. But the second nozzle has a process value of 1 or 3 bar. And the third nozzle has a process value of 100 bar again. Which leads us to know that there must be a problem with the second nozzle. Back to the machine, let's see what's the problem with the defect nozzle. Oh, there's a lot of dirt in it. Now that we fixed the defect nozzle, the machine should work correct again. To prove that, we could go back to the office and watch the data via the LR device. But in addition to that, we can use the IOLink Bluetooth adapter.
the IFM Bluetooth adapter goes in between the Link connection. And now I can use the IFM Quick Look app to connect to the adapter to view the tensor data. Let's go to the process value. We see the first nozzle has a process value of 100 bar. And the second nozzle has the process value of 100 bar an hour as well. Thanks to the data splitter we found the problem and now the machine is working good again. I hope this video helps you to understand how to use the data splitter and the Bluetooth plug. And furthermore, shows you the benefits for a diagnostic and monitoring process. ISM. Close to you.